Frank, Tyson, welcome back to Riyadh. I mean, it is rapidly becoming the home of big town boxing, which inevitably means that you two are, are always here. Correction, it is, is the, the home big of big time boxing. All right, I stand corrected. Tyson, um, what does this place mean to you now? Listen, this is like a second home for me now. I was the king of Las Vegas for a few years, and then I uh, came home for a few years, and then now I'm uh, taking over Las Vegas for a few years. It's fantastic, absolutely brilliant place to holiday, to visit, everything. I came here recently um, after the Ngannou fight with my family for a two-week break in Jeddah, and it was fantastic on the Red Sea, and then uh, we're back here again in Riyadh. Um, it's a great place, great place to visit, and a great place to, uh, very welcoming. Frank, could you ever imagine, I was gonna say five years ago, but let alone that, like one year ago, that you'd be in this position and putting on fights of this magnitude here in Riyadh? Well, I would say seven months ago, we've no one, no one would thought, I mean, we were actually planning to put the fight foot fight song, weren't we, in, uh, in England? In England, yeah. And the opportunity came along through the, uh, the vision and the drive of His Excellency. And uh, Tyson, obviously, Spencer, the deal was done. And, and to be really honest about it, I think it's, it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing for all of boxing because it's enabled and made these fights happen very quickly, very, very quickly. Being part of the Riyadh season, and the Riyadh season is really, really important for the area. It's their shop window, it's showing what Saudi Arabia is about, what Riyadh's about, and uh, and they opened it up this year with Tyson. So that's how how much they love the boxing, and more importantly, how much they love Tyson. You're a worldwide figure now, Tyson. I actually came here five years ago, believe it or not, when the Riyadh season first started. It was nowhere near as big as this. It was tiny compared to this. It only had maybe eight or nine countries when it was when it was here at the beginning. I came here with the WWE, I was wrestling, I wrestled Braun Strowman here at the Crown Jewel. Um, so you had to come back five years later and um, be the uh, emperor of the boxing here. It's, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Oh. WWE's going crazy at the minute, Tyson. Do you fancy a piece of the rock? <laughs> it's a fancy piece of anybody if the money's right. But uh, WWE, no, I'm not cheap. So Vince, if you're watching, get your checkbook out, son. He's not there anymore. <laughs> Well, yeah, whoever's Triple there, H, yeah. whoever you are. Hunter, if you're watching, son. <laughs> Expensive. All right, guys, you've obviously got an amazing rapport. We see it only really when it comes to like a, a fight week or a, a promo for a fight. But what's your relationship like when the cameras aren't rolling? How close are you guys? Well, it, it depends. I mean, you know, we've got our own lives, we've got our own family lives. I'm, I'm always busy. Tyson, I mean, he's forever busy, really. I know he's, he spends a lot of time at home, but He's always got something on him. You're always doing. I have, yeah. I'm always doing my dogs or doesn't. bins or whatever I'm doing. <laughs> but if I'm not doing that, I'm doing shows and stuff. So it's hard to uh, to get time. And we live so far apart. Like it's like we live in a foreign country each other. He lives in London. I live in Morecambe Bay. So it's a long time apart. You can probably get to Riyadh quicker than you can get to London from Morecambe by car. Um, so yeah. But we do have a little few outings, don't we? Spend yeah, some we down your favourite restaurants. Yeah, we uh, do. We do. Frank. It's a nice time. And it's a, for me, it's a joy, you know, because I really, you know, uh, this journey has been brilliant, brilliant, most importantly for Tyson, but it's been yeah. brilliant for me. And to be involved in it has just been something special, especially, you know, at my time in life. Um, I'm just, it just that keeps getting better and better. I'm, I'm loving every moment. Yeah, and, uh, and obviously I enjoy the, the relationship that we've got. Yeah, well, that journey recently has just had a couple of bumps in the road when it comes to the Usyk fight. You know, it was set for December and it got pushed back to, to February and now it's locked in for May. How have you dealt with some of the hurdles that have come your way, like mentally and physically? I've never had any mental um, issues, really, uh, because then life shit happens. That's a little um, saying that I've learnt along the way and to get used to it as well, to understand it. That shit does happen in life when you're mostly unexpecting it. So once you get to the terms of that sort of thing, then anything can happen. And you know, life goes on. It won't be the first time, it definitely won't be the last. And there's another little saying, worse things have happened at sea. So, you know, it's only a postponement and we get to do it later on. So what we're supposed to be in life will always be. And every God's timing is perfect. It ain't late, it ain't early. It's precisely perfect, remember that. And I think, you know, I, I always believe it. I always say, out of bad comes good. And maybe that, that will work in Tyson's favour. I mean, he was in immaculate shape and condition. And he and obviously he'll get back into his serious training, what, in a few weeks' time. Yeah. But he hasn't got a shift weight no, wait, no, time. I'm so he's gonna, it's very good. Long, and he, you know, to reach his peak again, he'll, he'll work his programme out. And I think, 
And I know I keep saying it to everybody, I'm telling you, he is going to do a job. I'm not saying it's because he's here. I, I think you're going to see something ultra, ultra amazing on the night. The biggest fight of the 21st century. It is, and, and sure. you've said in the past, Tyson, that like, legacy doesn't mean that much to you. It's, no. What is it that's driving you to want to become the unified champion? Uh, the money. Dollars in my bank accounts. Um, yeah. Basically, feeding me kids and their kids. And there's never going to be. But I got nothing to prove to any motherfucker. Excuse me, French, right? I got nothing to prove to him. I could have retired when I beat Dylan White Wembley with 94,000. Legacy intact, could have walked away, whatever. But I thought to myself, there's never going to be an opportunity for someone that's come out of me to ever be able to earn 100 million in one night, yeah? Ever. I don't care what they become, it's very difficult to get that amount of money. So I could have walked away then in 2021. I probably would have been 49 stone by now. However, I decided I'm going to dig in a little bit longer um, and make as much money as I can out of it because I know our word ad is to earn a few quid in the normal world and not everybody can be a superstar and everybody can be a, a heavyweight champion of the world. So I read this saying about 15 years ago. Someone in my family has got to stand and fight. At some point in life, we all have to stand and fight. So it may as well be me. I am the man to stand and fight. In my, my generation, and my life, and my breed, my people, I'm the fighter. So no one better than me to stand and fight for what I believe in and what I think is right. So that's why I'm doing it. And the fact I get to add a few more belts to the cabin. I don't even know where I'm going to put them. I've got that many, Frank. I haven't I've, got space honestly, for them. It's amazing. I mean, do you remember you laid them all? I've got 22 belts that, yeah. now. Or 23, maybe. Yeah. This man's trousers will never fall down. Definitely not. There's no fall in my pants down. <laughs> However... There's also another few accolades that come with it, other than the money. Um, first undisputed champion since the 90s. That's got to mean something. The first, I don't know how many belts, there's five or six belts, world championship in heavyweights. Nice. Yeah. And there's never really been two undefeated world heavyweight champions fighting each other for a long time either. Since I, me and Wilder done it. I back, think it's back the first the time for four belts. Yeah, I think it is. So we've got the WBC, WBA, IBF, IBO, WBO, yeah. Ring Magazine and Lineal. Yeah. So the Ring Magazine's an award and so is Lineal. So yeah, and there the, is five and belts. The, yeah. And the uh, special Saudi belt. Oh, know, there's loads, good. about six, seven, eight belts maybe. So all them things aside, what else do I do it for? I suppose to keep myself fit and healthy, um, give myself a purpose in life while I'm still only 35. Um, and that's it, really. There's people would say, well, oh, you're boxing for the accolade of being a champion and all that stuff. And, and I'll say this, why, why do you think I rap for? To push fucking rap for? I don't think so. Um, that's Kanye, that, <laughs> by is. the way. Um, so you do it for the dough. Yeah. At first, when you're coming up, you want to be a champion. You want to win a title. You want to run a British title. You want to be in European. You want to win a world title. You want to buy a house. You want to buy a car. You want to buy a watch. And then, if you're daft enough, like me, you want to just keep going as well, just to see how long you can continue for. When everybody else says, you know what, Ty, you maybe should stop now. You've got all your faculties in order. You've made tons of money. You've got everything there is to offer on this planet. And I'm just like, well, you know, you're not the one in there having to battle out. And I actually love the thrill of the fight as well. As well as the dough, as well as everything else that comes with it, I like to have a, a scrap now and again. And that, that level of it. honesty. Yeah, Come on, Frank. Well, I, I was just saying, we, talk, we were talking yesterday, it reminded me years ago when we were talking about it, and you said when you was young, yeah. you wanted to be world champion. That was yeah. where you, it was your dream. And obviously your dream has come true in a big way. Yeah. But I also, um, you know, I may be wrong, but I always think that you love training. Yep. You're always training. And I always remember, you know, sort of uh, when we were working together early days, it was, when am I fighting? What date have I got? Yeah. And it's like, have, so I feel that the training has to have a purpose. Yeah. You know, you're training for it. And that maybe, maybe that gets you up in the morning. It does, it does. But the thing is, we can't do it forever, Frank, because age catches us all, well, we won't, we won't let you do it forever. I mean, whether you want to or not. Yeah. Because so. somebody's got to be... Every, the one thing what happens in the sport, in my opinion, I think the boxer always knows he's the first to know when he should stop. But he's the last to admit it. And it's up to the people around him to, you know, sit down and say, hang on a minute, 
it's too long. But yeah, I can only speak as honestly my experience. I don't think Tyson's got miles on the clock. He's had a few tough. Oh, he's had a few tough fights. In the oh, I've had lots fights. of tough fights. Yeah, tough fights. I've been up and down more than an, um, an escort's knickers <laughs> in the last few years. I don't know if you can say that on camera in Saudi, but I've said it, so yeah, whatever. That's all yours. <laughs> Can we just briefly just roll back a little bit to, to the cut, Tyson? <laughs> yeah. I, I just think it'd be interesting for, for fans of yourself and, and just viewers in general to know that what that process was like in real time. Like, when you realised there was blood, what was the immediate reaction? Like, how, when did Frank find out? Like, just talk us through that moment. Um, what is it that you want to know? I got, pun I got punched in the face with an elbow. Um, it cut me, blood everywhere. Um, I knew it was instant cut as soon as uh, he happened. I shouted, cut. Um, and everyone was a bit crazy and shouting and screaming, but listen, what, you can't cry over spilled milk. It is what it is. We knew instantly the fight was off, had a massive gash above the eye. Um, but you can't do anything about it, can you? It's only a cut and no one's died, have they? No. And when I was saying to the boys, don't worry, it's only a few quid. I'll earn it again. Do you know what I mean? It's a cut. A few quid down the line. I get it again. Not the end of the world. You're, you're quite, but you are a philosophical person. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you never, you know, I should, you know, immediately, obviously, I think anyone would be, you know, massively disappointed. But you reset your mind to say, right, hang on, we got a date. You work, that date was worked out very quickly. Before know. the date was worked out, though, it yeah. was like, well, is there going to be another fight, or yeah, is yeah. it going to happen? Is he gonna fight so that else? was pretty yeah. shitty. Yeah. But when I got the date, like a day later, everything was hunky dory. Really, it was all good. Great. Frank, everyone knew straight away. I had yeah. a gym full of people, yeah. so it was hard to um, contain. Good. So, looking ahead, if everything... Sorry, did, did it ever cross your mind to call Usyk? Did you call Usyk? And, and call him? Yeah, talk to him about it. If I had his number, I'd be phoning him at five in the morning, Frank, calling him. <laughs> and that's the truth, and you know it. Or maybe two. Yeah. <laughs> hey, sorry, Adam, someone... It, 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 a very similar thing happened to you when you were meant to fight David Hay. Mm. So you kind of felt both sides. How did you feel when that happened? David Listen, it is what it is. It shit happens. It's not about how you feel. Reality is it's happened. Get on with it. Deal with it. Cry about it or deal with it. That's everything in life, isn't it? But it's a typical thing because there's going to be setbacks in life, no matter what you're doing, what job you're in, ups and down, highs and lows, setbacks. Cry about it, kick the wall, punch, whatever you want to do, or deal with it. And that's it, move on. Well, the fight's still incoming, and we've obviously got a big fight on Friday night. If everything shakes out that, the way that I think a lot of boxing fans want it to, do you think that after Undisputed and you're successful, that AJ Fury is the biggest fight in world boxing? No, because I'm fighting the fight of the century and AJ's been already tonked twice by the little man. So he can't be involved in the question. When it comes to Usyk and AJ, so no, so no, it's already been done on it, Frank, twice. Twice. So you can't even compare the men. So I'm, I'm fighting undefeated. his... Both yeah. undefeated. So he's, he's a slayed already, AJ. So he's out of question anyway. He's not even in it anymore. Um, and I've got to beat him, which is no easy task. I know I keep saying he's a bum and all that, but he, he is a tough competitor. And if he wasn't, then he wouldn't be in the position he's in, would he? About to make a shit ton of money and about to face the Gypsy King in a fight. So he's... Um, the fight of the century, I've named it that, because it's really that. You've got him who's beat AJ and Chisora and Dubois, and I beat Wilder three times, Dylan White and him. Klitschko. So we've wiped them all out and Klitschko as well. So this is the last two standing. He wasn't even in it a few years ago. It was only AJ who let him give him a foot in the door. So well, he was a three-headed monster at one stage, the Gypsy King, Wilder and um, AJ. Wilder gets knocked out by the GK and Joshua gets tonked by the um, Ukrainian dosser. So, there was only me left, last man standing, I've done it. However, we continue and continue and continue because that's what mugs do. We keep going till there's no there's no it's, more left to give. It's, it's, a ma it's a massive fight, it's a massive event. Yeah. Not just in boxing, but in world sport. And you know like when England, England the World Cup, when we won't we won't remember it, you weren't about. But when I was a kid, that the, the whole country stops. And I think for this fight, it's going to be the same. It's a unification fight. It will be, it's not going to be a sports story. It's going to be a news story. Yeah. And everybody, everybody will want to be here to watch it happen. It is history. And there are times, times in your life where you, when 
you know, you look at sporting history and you're part of sporting history and it's driven by Tyson. And I know what he says, what he feels about titles, but you know, down the road, and he'll say, I don't care, but I, I you know, I, I care because I, like, I love to hear it. Every time he's introduced somewhere, the undisputed world champion, four belts, he did it. Nobody else has done it, he did it. And you can't take it away. And I'll tell you what, for his family, for his children, you know, your dad's, that's my dad. I mean, that's, they don't get any better. They than say that now though, can't they? You know. Yeah, of course they can. And when you, when you get in, introduced years down the line, no one cares, any just another bear bomb in the shower, I aren't you? No, I don't agree with that. Because you're irrelevant and you're an has-been. You're done, aren't you? You're a former undisputed champion, which means diddly squat well, to someone former, who's current. Former undefeated. Yeah. So, listen, it's all, it's all, it's all, it's all good stuff to have. It is. But for me, I ain't really that bothered about what people think or say, so oh, it yeah. means dog shit to me. Well, I think that's obvious because one of the things I wanted to ask you about was like the humble foundations that you carry with you at all times, because I think it's really rare it, for anybody in the public eye on your level to be able to switch between Morkham doing the big shop and then global superstar in front of the entire world. From Asda in Morecambe Bay yeah. to here on how top of the it, job. How do you switch on and off? I've got two, two things, haven't I? I've got the Gypsy King, who's the boxer, and I've got Tyson Fury, who's the father and the husband, and the dog shit picker upper and all that, yeah? So it's quite, it's quite a contrast. However, it works quite well, to be fair. Um, when I'm in Gypsy King mode, I'm talking to cameras and interviews and doing what I've got to do and performing, what I get paid to do. Um, but when I'm at home, I'm just a different, just a dad. Seven kids, a wife, nagging wife, may I put on that? Um, nagging wife, barking dog, crazy kids. You've seen the show. I don't live no big fancy lifestyle. All right, I might go on a, a boat or a, a plane every once in a while, but I don't really leave more Bay, to be fair. Just got a very mundane, uh, repetitive lifestyle, which I like because I've done all the erratic, crazy stuff in my life already, and I know no good can ever come out of it. However, Structured routine, getting up in the morning early, getting the kids ready, dropping them off, going to the gym, going for going having some food, coming back, picking them up, going to the gym again, getting to bed early. That's what I love. Although I'm not seeing the world and years pass me by quickly, flies, from like 18 to 24 in a flash, um, I really enjoy just pottering around doing nothing, being a normal person, which is fantastic. And there's a lot to be said for being a normal person, Frank. Tell me. In that. today's world, everybody wants to be famous and everyone wants to be a millionaire. But I'm both of them things, and I don't think it's that great. It's overrated. Fame is one thing, until you've got it, then you don't want it. Um, because you can't go anywhere. Like, where can I go? I said to Paris earlier, like, I, she goes, oh, it's lovely to come here, and Brendan said, it's yeah. lovely to come out here, isn't it? But you couldn't do it in the UK, I couldn't do this, because yeah. I get tortured. So that, that's Obviously to contend one. with. You're sitting you, down eating in a restaurant. And they're grabbing you by the head and coming stuff. over, like, even that couple of times they're in a hotel. Yeah. They want photos done, you're trying to eat. It's, but it's all, it all's a part of the job, yeah, isn't it? It's part so, of the job, but people should also respect space. You now, if you're with your family, they should respect That's space. very true, but they don't, however, because my wife's explained this to me. If I'm out having my Sunday roast and I've got one crying kid down trying to sort on one there and she's arguing across the table with me and a fan walks in, they don't see what's going on. Yeah, they just see me, that like the person they know from the television or the fan or whoever, and they just go, oh, this is my opportunity, wham! They don't see what's going on. They don't see the... The bigger picture they just see the person so there's no i used to get like pretty upset about it all but once she explained it to me like that i thought you know what that's 100 percent right because you don't see the big picture you just see someone that they admire or look up to so or whatever on you. Yeah. and they zone in on that one person and then that's their time and it, then it's up to me then to be meet your hero that thing you know people say you meet your hero never meet your hero well i try and be as, as good as i can to everybody because when they're meeting their hero you don't want him to go away saying he's a proper tit him. You it's want to say the, he's all right. It's one of the difficult things, I guess, about you know being a, an elite competitor because it goes hand in hand with it, doesn't it? You don't necessarily want to be famous, but it comes with being a champion. I think the champion and the boxing is one thing aside, but I think I've gone way in above and beyond all that yeah. type of thing. <coughs> with all the TV shows and Netflix things and songs and wrestling and books, books, three, three of them, and three Paris has done two books. as well. Yeah. Um, even my dad's got one out. So yeah, and then you've got Tommy and Molly as well and the baby. So it's like a bit, a bit, bit of a celebrity thing going on now, which I'm not that up for to being a celebrity, you know what I mean? I just want to be left alone type of thing. I want to walk my dog in peace, not be videoed and tortured wherever I go. And that's it really, that's about it.